there's no doubt that having ego and arrogance is strictly not on the cards for us. Having those traits makes a person horrible to be around. But let's not be mistaken. Having honor and being respected are traits that are admired and ones that we should all aspire to have. What's the difference and where is the line that differentiates between arrogance and honor? Let's ask the internet. Arrogance is defined as making claims or pretensions to superior importance or rights, overbearingly assuming, insolently proud. Honor, on the other hand, is defined as having good character or reputation for honesty and fair dealing and to show great respect for someone. I guess you could say that arrogance is when you feel like you deserve to be respected and honoured because of what you think you have done and what you think you have achieved. Whereas being honoured and being respected is when it's given to you. It's being held in high regard by other people, whether you like it or not, without even showing an inkling of wanting to have that trait. And whilst I don't often take my definitions and morals from the internet, these definitions will suffice for the sake of this video. So now the question is, how do you become a person who is respected by the people around them? The most recent book I'll be reading is How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie, which was written in 1936. So I, I guess you could say I'm a bit late to the party. But the book speaks about matters that were researched by psychologists surrounding communication and leadership, amongst other things. And I couldn't help but pick up on three key points I felt were screaming out that I should implement in my own life. Funnily enough, these same points are, like anything positive, spoken about extensively in our religion. But for the sake of this discussion, I'm going to keep it solely related to the kind of practical life and non-religious dealings. Point number one, people respond so much better to praise than to criticism. If you want someone to do better, try rewarding them when they do good rather than punishing them and criticizing them and putting them down when they don't do good. Carnegie mentions in his book that there is one desire that every single human wants, and that is the desire to feel important. If you're constantly putting people down, you're probably not making them feel important and therefore probably not winning over any fans. The author talks about the idea of a boss who isn't happy with the work of his employees and therefore threatens them with the idea of being fired to do better. The employees will probably do the job and they'll probably do it better. But as soon as that boss is not in the room, they're all going to be bad mouthing him behind his back. That to me is someone who got his way, but definitely isn't respected. So tip number one is highlight when you notice someone doing something great. Go the extra mile when they do a lofty act and show them that you've seen their goodness. In the words of the author, criticism is dangerous because it wounds a person's pride, hurts his sense of importance and arouses resentment. Oh, and he also mentions remember people's names. In his words again, remember that a person's name is to that person the sweetest and most important sound in any language. Point number two, and this one I really, really need to work on myself, is speak little. We hear so often about this in our religion. The punishment of those who are loose with their tongues. The advice to only speak when you have something to say and so much more. If you want to be respected, speak little. This is a piece of advice that my dad's been giving me since I was a child. And given that my full-time job is to speak, I probably failed in that mission. <laughs> but in all seriousness, when you move in silence, there's a certain mystique. People don't know what you're thinking. And to be honest, if we open our mouth at that point, we'd probably lose a bit of respect. I can remember so many points in my life where over-talking has quickly made me the butt of the joke or almost given people a pass to not respect me. Take it from someone who's been there. Speak only when you have something powerful to say and it will seem like all you speak is power. And the final point that I want to give you guys from what I've been reading and researching for this video, try never to argue. Okay, that's probably just too unrealistic for all of us, but try to argue as least as possible. Carnegie mentions in his book, the best way to win an argument is to avoid it. He says, whenever we argue with someone, no matter if we win or lose the argument, we still lose. And sometimes we think about if we just convince that person of our point, they'll understand. But he brings up a quote that really puts things into perspective. A man convinced against his will is of the same opinion still. 
See, that quote shows us that if all we're trying to do is win the argument, perhaps we'll win. But perhaps we haven't done what we actually wanted to do, which was change that person's perspective. If we're just seen as argumentative people, we're probably not going to do a great deal for our reputation. And I wanted to end the video there, but I'm going to throw in a bonus point because it's a point that probably benefited me the most in a practical sense from the book. And that point is stop sticking your butt in people's faces. Let me explain. When people are giving you a point, if we say the word but straight away, we're almost disregarding what they're saying. And if you want to have respect from people, we have to show that we're respecting what they say and we're respecting their opinion, even when we disagree with it. So let's say, for example, practical example, you have a business where you sell cakes. You sell cakes. And a person knows that you sell cakes and they come to you and they say, oh man, I just went to this other cake shop and they sell the most amazing cakes. What's very normal for us as humans is to throw our butt in their face and say, but have you tried our cakes? Or that's great, but have you even seen what we can do? And what that does is that disregards their point completely. And Carnegie basically mentions that an easy way around it is to replace but with and. So now imagine the situation when someone says, oh, I just tried the cakes from this other shop and they were amazing. Now imagine if you say, wow, I've had the cakes from there as well and they are really, really good. And have you ever tried tasting any of ours? Or and I'd love for you to try one of ours because I think maybe you'd be surprised. That What that does is that accepts their point, but then it also does the same thing that the bot would have done. So there you go, guys. That's four points that I've kind of learned as I'm still reading the book and I shouldn't be kind of giving points from a book that I haven't finished reading. Uh, but hopefully that's helped you guys in understanding something that I've recently taken up on, which is the idea of hopefully implementing these practical steps to make sure that we can still have our honor, our respect, our izza without having arrogance and pride. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this quick video and I'll see you on the next one.